It's so much more than just paying your dues. It's the lifeblood of your apprentice phase. And I'm breaking it all down into actionable steps you can use this weekend. It's next. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. If you are passionate about the craft of professional wrestling, and you're never done learning all about it, then you've landed in the exact right place. Go ahead, join the Till We Make It tribe, subscribe down below, and do all the YouTube things while you're down there. Today's video is dedicated to one of my long-standing loyal patrons, Alex. He's just one of the awesome people that make this all possible, and he inspired this very video. So thanks, Alex. You may have a home promotion where you are part of the crew, where you perform all of the time. Or perhaps you don't have a home promotion, but either way, you have the ability to volunteer to crew shows to help make pro wrestling events happen. And this is one of the most valuable networking opportunities you have available to you, especially during your apprentice phase. It's the chance to meet people face to face and make real human connections. This is so much more effective than if you were staying at home and liking random posts on the social meets, hoping that's going to get you somewhere. And when you go out to volunteer, to be part of the crew at another wrestling event, what might that entail? I'm gonna tell you, for starters, you're gonna show up at the building four hours before the advertised bell time. If the poster says bell time is at 8 p.m., you are showing up at 4 p.m. You wanna be there before the ring truck backs up, before the promoter shows up to open the building, but when they do, you're going to approach them and introduce yourself. You're gonna be polite, but brief. And it might sound something like this. Hi, I'm Mike. I currently train at the Wrestle Factory, but I came over to see if you need help setting up your ring or getting ready for the show today. 95% of the time, I bet the answer is going to be yes. Now you've taken that all important first step. For today, you're part of the crew. And maybe more importantly, you have the opportunity to do some networking. Pro tip for you, wear clean clothes, but in dark colors for your crew work. But pack deodorant, cologne, body spray, or perfume, and a bright colored shirt, as well as a hand towel for later. Why? Because you're definitely gonna work up a sweat doing your crew work, but you, my friend, will never appear to be a sweaty mess. So once the venue is actually set, you're going to towel off, clean yourself up, and come back in looking and smelling fresh. Even if that means you're going to pull a Clark Kent routine out in your car. So now what do you do? If you haven't yet, you're going to find the captain of Ring Crew and introduce yourself. But keep in mind, not every organization calls this person the captain of Ring Crew. It might just be the head of ring crew. There might be an employee whose only purpose is to supervise the construction of the ring. At some companies, it's just entrenched in their company culture that the senior most roster member oversees ring crew. But you want to figure that out. Make sure that they hear your name when you introduce yourself and ask that person to put you to work. And then as you go about your crew responsibilities for the day, Look for opportunities to keep introducing yourself. Keep making those networking introductions as you work. Don't do this while someone's trying to hand you a board coming off the back of the truck. But we all know what that experience is like when everybody bottlenecks waiting for more items to come off the ring truck and everybody is just standing around for a moment. In those idle moments, turn to the people around you and say, Hi, I'm Mike. I train over at the Wrestle Factory. What's your name? It's nice to meet you. Pro tip for you. If you can do so discreetly, start a list of the names of everyone that you meet in your phone. Remembering 
five names that you just learned in the last five minutes is hard enough. Now imagine 50 names or 100 names. Forget about it. Just make a list in your phone and include one distinguishing characteristic next to each name to trigger your memory. Like, Carrie has a Led Zeppelin tattoo. Kyle sometimes works as a referee. Kayla has royal blue hair. If you're enjoying today's video, won't you please leave a like a palooza down below. It really does help the channel to grow, and I'd appreciate it. Thanks for doing that. Once the ring is up, don't turn into that person that asks a million questions of the promoter, or the booker, or the captain of ring crew. These people have a ton of responsibilities on show day. Instead, I want you to be proactive. Be alert. If you notice that after the ring goes up, the crew just starts putting out chairs, go and grab a couple chairs and start putting them in rows. The more seamlessly you just blend in with that flow, the faster you feel like part of the team. You're just one of the gang. And while you do this, keep a mental tally of everyone you have not introduced yourself to yet. Your goal is always to meet everyone. Pro tip for you. Don't be the person who shakes hands when you've got grease or rust or sawdust or dirt all over your hands from doing ring crew work. When it comes time to make more introductions, you either need to go and wash your hands first or stick with the old Masawa elbow. All throughout the day, keep track of the flow of the ensemble and the crew. Here are some things to look out for. After the ring is up, do they break for lunch and leave the building, or does everyone remain in-house? How far before the opening bell do they open the doors to the customers? Is there a production meeting beforehand everyone is expected to attend? Note all of this down in your phone. That way, when you come back a second time, you'll already understand the complete flow of their show day. You might even be able to help someone out who's volunteering for the very first time. But the quicker that you learn the flow of the day, well, the sooner you become a valued member of the crew. Plus, if you're the one who knows that it's ring first, then chairs, then lights, then stage, then break for lunch, everyone comes back, then concessions, then merchandise, you're going to start to identify the areas and the times where and when you can do your networking. Pro tip for you. Observe the handshakes you see front of house as well as behind the scenes because there are places out there where the wrestler handshake is still in use. So maybe backstage in the locker room, everyone shakes hands firmly like they're at a job interview. Well, you want to mimic that. But perhaps front of house, the crew still uses the secret wrestler handshake. Well, you better jump on that trend too. Show them you understand and respect their organization's culture. When the time finally arrives for you to make your networking pitch, find someone in charge and say something like this. Is there anything else I can help you with today? And if they say yes, that's positive. That means that they are trusting you with something even further. It's a really good sign. And if in that moment they say no, the show work is all done, thank you very much, this is a fine time for you to say something like this. Well, I do have my bag out in my car, and I have gear to wrestle, as well as to referee. I also brought a suit and tie in case you need somebody to hold a microphone. If there's any other way I can contribute to today's show, just say the word. I think this is a really non-confrontational way of moving forward. It's not saying, hey, can I get booked? You got anything for me today? A lot of times, the opportunities to perform do not present themselves until moments before the show goes live, because that is when a promoter is going to get a last minute text saying someone's not going to show up. And you know what? Now we need somebody to fill in for that enhancement match or they get a last minute phone call and they realize we are one person short for the battle royal. And that is when the light bulb is gonna go off in their head and you want them to think, hey, where's that kid who said he had a referee shirt out in his bag? Or 
where is that rookie who helped us set up? Maybe I could plug them into the battle royal. And that's why in those moments, you want to be visible. You want to be obvious. You want to be remembered. So pack that brightly colored shirt and make sure you are easy to spot so that if an opportunity opens up, you are the one who gets to take advantage of it. If you volunteer as Ring Crew at an event for its networking value, make sure you maximize your chances of getting the results that you want. Have your bag at the ready. Make sure you can run and go get it really quickly and be set up in a matter of minutes because many times the best opportunities are the ones that crop up at the very last minute. And even if it doesn't result in a booking, in any chance to perform whatsoever, remember this is a long game. Networking is a little like planting seeds, and they may not sprout today, but over time, they will. This requires hard work and patience, but eventually, something will sprout and grow. You just have to look at it as a long game. When you do, you discover it's a game you can win. I want to thank one of my newest patrons, Stefan. Thanks for joining the gang. And you can be part of our community over on Patreon as well. Just follow the link down below in the descriptors, or the one that should be appearing on screen right now. Kind of looks like a letter P inside a square box. Each and every week, I publish a video exclusively for my patrons. Last week, for example, I made one all about an upcoming pro wrestling show with a budget of $100,000.